welcome to another episode of Azania in Therapy. Today I'm quite excited uh, to have a conversation. I don't know where it will end, but I'm looking forward to it, right? I've got a very interesting guest, uh, Dr. Pule holds a PhD in consulting psychology. She's registered with the Health Professions Council of South Africa, a counseling psycho as a counseling psychologist. Uh, she's an academic practitioner, she's a researcher, innovator, she's inquisitive, uh, a global contributor, a mentor, uh, somebody interested in leadership acceleration, uh, curious about conscious and unconscious dynamics in groups uh, and organizations and systems. So um, and th this, these um, are the interesting parts of her, but I know her, uh, a good friend of mine as, as Neo Pule, but welcome uh, Dr. Pule to the podcast. How are you doing? Good. Thanks for having <laughs> how do, me. How do you like how do you like my, my Finally. <laughs> how, do, how do you feel <laughs> being Finally. introduced? Finally. Finally. Finally we get to speak. Finally right? we get to do this. Yeah. I'm excited. Um, yes. Yeah, so I mean um so I, I introduced you and um in, 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 in this fashion, right? But but simply put, uh, according to you, what is it that you do, you know, if, if somebody was just asking you um, what is it that you do? How, how would you explain it, you know, to the lay person? Wow. What is it that I do? Yeah. You know, when you wake up to do something that you love. Yeah. Um, so you do something. Sure. That, so you don't work. You, you, are you yeah. one of those? I don't work. I, I don't work. I, my, my work is my play. My play is my work. Yeah. You know, I, I wake up and I, I get excited about what's planned yeah um people always ask me uh why what are you always busy with yeah you know and i i always respond to say i always have work yeah you always have <laughs> I, I always have work yeah um i i i always go around with with my laptop bag I invested in a very good laptop bag that I can take anywhere and anywhere, yeah, you know. Yeah. Because um, I'm always, I'm always thinking, I'm always connecting. Yeah. I'm always planning. Yeah. <laughs> um, it, it, at least we plan and we do. Yeah. What we plan. Um, no point in planning and seeing nothing coming out of it. And and not executing. Uh, yeah. So. I, it's so hard. <laughs> yeah. It's so hard to say what do I do because um, you do so many things. And I, 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 I breathe, I breathe and live. What could be the answer to that question? Yeah. But I mean, you use some of the words. So, so I, I, I'm currently employed in academia. Uh huh. So, so does that mean that you're a lecturer? You know, or, so you lecture students. Yes, and we train, um, you know, psychologists. Uh -huh. um, is it like in their masters. In or? their masters, but I have undergraduate class. I have honors class. Okay, so you you prepare future psychologists. I prepare future psychologists. Psych psychologists, in, yeah. In any way you can think, you okay. know. Um, I'm one of the very I'll use the word passionate ones. Yeah. Um, maybe somebody else will say tough or strict. I see. But I don't think that psychology training should be taken lightly. Yeah. Because the end product is input into people's lives. Yeah. Uh, so the one who will um, give that input into yeah. someone's life should be of top shape yeah so we, we cannot take psychology training lightly yeah um, all the way from first year yeah you know um, when somebody walks into a master selection interview they should be shaped in such a way that what the master's course will achieve will be to panel beat yeah you know into a registered psychologist yeah but you are this raw material yeah you know that's ready for panel beating mm. not that you walk into a master's class and we have to 
start from scratch you know yeah um, so so I don't take psychology training um, lightly and and so my passion comes through you know whether I'm speaking to undergrad students or whatever level of postgrad yeah and I, I think maybe it's, it's important to maybe even flesh uh, flesh out a few ideas there right I think um, many people actually are not aware of maybe the journey of a psych how you how one becomes a psychologist right so you get your undergrad you do your three years and then you do an honest program uh, and I think some places they do it in one year and then some institutions I think they might split it in two or mm -hmm. you have the option mm -hmm. to do that mm -hmm. and then you have to do a master's program mm -hmm. and then you can do it either in clinical mm -hmm. in counseling mm -hmm. in research mm -hmm. in industrial mm -hmm. educational Mm -hmm. What's the other one? Educational. Educational. Mm -hmm. uh, and then there's a new one. It's forensic. There too, actually. Uh, forensic. And, yes. and neuro. And neuro. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So it's it's not. So they separate mm -hmm. both of them. Yeah, mm -hmm. yeah. But you, yeah, they they quite uh, the scope is wide enough. So then you have to get into this master's program. Mm -hmm. But the way you get into the master's program, mm -hmm. it's not as automatic as okay, I got great marks mm -hmm. for honors mm -hmm. that you have to go through this dreaded. Mm -hmm. Uh, infamous mm. selection process mm. Mm. where um, you are going to be interviewed mm. and then um, the, 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 the selection panel has to pick about mm. depending 8, 10, mm. 12 mm. depending which institution you are in mm. and then you make it into do the group mm. you study for a year mm -hmm. two years for the coursework, for coursework mm -hmm. research mm -hmm. and um, once you, are, you successfully complete that then you can be a registered uh, well, I mean, you write boards first. You write right? board exams, mm -hmm. yes, and then you mm -hmm. can be a registered psychologist. Mm -hmm. So that's a journey. That's like mm -hmm. a six, seven year journey, mm -hmm. right? For some people, eight. Right? For some people, eight, mm -hmm. and some, and I'm, I'm, you know, just detailing it because mm -hmm. I think people also think that. You, yeah, everybody can just do it, right? Mm -hmm. And and so to the point that you were making that, partly is that you said people are going to work with people. Yeah need to be prepared in a way so that's what you are you are, you are talking about that you know you can't just rock up and some mm. doing a master you, you should have at some point done some good personal mm -hmm. development mm -hmm. do you want to do, do you want to clarify what that is you know because there's this thing that you should come you've done some work it's a fancy word <laughs> <laughs> what what work should uh, you have done you know what yeah. um as as the psychologist i mean you know yourself yeah, right yeah, you yeah. you are the tool yeah you are the tool to therapy yeah um yes um you know you might be seeing a child and throw out your box of toys or yeah. your box of you know whatever it is that you're using as your tool so you might be seeing adults and 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 you throw out an assessment or you know whatever workbook that you'll be using and those could be your tools but yeah. the primary tool is you yeah the 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 therapist yeah you know um and and like a car that cannot operate without going to service yeah um you cannot operate uh, well enough as a psychologist without you know, having gone through the chisels. Yeah, yeah. You know, and um, I mean, there are those inevitable training moments called life. Yeah. Um, you know, that puts you through experiences that mm. could prepare you. Yeah. Um, but I think, you know, one thing that's, that makes um, a psych psychology or psychologist candidate mm -hmm. special or unique yeah. is is the meaning that one gets out of those you know experiences the lessons the insights yeah the insights yeah because how do you help someone <laughs> to have insight about their own life mm -hmm. when you have not done it yourself yeah right so um we put people through growth processes yeah um and so I'm expecting that you yourself have gone through some growth experience. So yeah. it, it could be something simple. I don't know. You know, I don't want to label something simple and it's actually big for someone. Yeah, but, but, but it could you, be, you experience something maybe traumatic yeah, or something it, challenging. Yeah, you know, it doesn't even have to be like something hectic. You yeah. Know? Um, it could really just... 
I mean, experiences. Yeah. You know, the fact that I grew up with brothers only, or the fact that I don't know, I I I I went to school at a certain place but yeah. what did I learn yeah. from that experience yeah. and what is the meaning that I that I make or even that I that I even um, can grow from yeah. um, given the, that experience that I had and yeah. so am I able to translate the experiences that I have mm -hmm. into growth moments into lessons you know that I can help somebody else do the same yeah you know and so the this is a very simplistic way of saying something quite complicated yeah um, but I mean, I'm respecting that we're not speaking to people who could understand psychology only. Yeah. So, so I'm putting it like this, you know, for that reason. Um, but yeah, I mean, there are very different ways, you know, we have our models and our theories that yeah. we use to, to, to do the work that we do. Yeah. But I, 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 you know, and, and sometimes students or candidates, potential candidates walk into the interview thinking, yeah. oh, I've done this community work. Mm -hmm. But there's no point in you doing community work if mm. there's nothing that you're taking from it yeah. as a growth development experience. What did you learn? What meaning have yeah. you uh, taken from you this know? experience? So people get upset like, oh, I became a peer counselor for five years. How, how could these people not see me? You yeah. know, and, and also you're being, you're being uh, uh, compared yeah. to others other people yeah um, and so of course the one who's done most more work or, or most of the work will be more appealing than yeah. you know somebody yeah. else but also it's also about the group dynamic so the six seven people that you were talking about who end up, who end up being selected you know are they able to gel yeah because at the end of the day you also are cultivating a learning environment mm. um, and you, you the responsible thing to do is not to put a group of people together who will not be able to learn together yeah oh, what's the point yeah so it's it's not that straightforward yeah it's not you know it makes sense but I think I think what you are describing in that you know uh, because um, human beings are meaning making creatures mm. and we go through these different experiences and it's important that we've paused long enough mm. to sort of assess and um, uh, make a meaning and have some insight so that if we when we take people on a journey mm. Uh, because you can't take people on journeys that you haven't been because then you're going to struggle yeah. so it's important that you are at a certain level be yeah. before you want to work with people yeah. now th this is what you do in terms of your academia lecture but what you also do is uh, I see you are globe trotting uh, you know you are presenting here and there and what are you presenting you had left and um, um, I don't know did you go to the UK yeah. or, what what work was that about okay so um, and what capacity did you go there and, and present there? right so 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 I mean Let's say at the foundation, yeah. I'm a psychologist, right? Yeah. Um, and then I express my being a psychologist. One of the ways that I'm doing that is yeah. in academia, right? Yeah. So, so teaching. Mm. Um, but then a well-rounded mm. academic mm. Um, is able to integrate teaching and learning, mm -hmm. research, and engaged scholarship. Yeah. Or what used to be called community engagement, um, which we fenced it up and added a couple of things to it, mm. and now called engaged scholarship. Mm. Engaged scholarship. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Okay. So, um, well, I mean, you know, in academia there are lots of buzzwords. Yeah. Um, so social justice is in the, yeah. the engaged scholarship. What does social justice you know, mean? And <laughs> transformation, <laughs> transformation. And decolonization. Decolon yeah, you know the, the big all words, those decolonization. Things, they, I mean, they are all muddled up in that engaged scholarship, right? Yeah. Okay, so I, I my brain functions like that, that I, that I, I don't know, somebody can call me lazy. Hmm. Uh, that I want to hit one bird, um, many birds with one stone. Yeah. Um, but I, I take it as you know, a way to take care of myself. Yeah. 
to not expand myself in a fragmented manner. Yeah. Uh, but also, I take it as creativity. Yeah. Um, and I like exciting things. Yeah. You know. Um, so how can we make this big profile of me being an, an academic interesting? Yeah. So, long story short, um, I, 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 the heartbeat of this integration of these sort of three, four elements yeah. of my academic profile um, is found within my um, ongoing study on student leadership. Yeah. Um, so, this study started off with my PhD. Mm-hmm. Um, and I I engaged with student leaders of one university. Yeah, do you still remember the title of your PhD? I do. <laughs> I do. <laughs> hey, so it's so important. It's part of your life. Hey. So, yeah. so what, what was it? What were you looking at? Maybe if you can start us off there. Okay, so so um, through the PhD study, I I I studied. Um, the social construction of student leadership in a South African university. Yeah. So I was interested um, in how student leaders look at themselves, look at what they do, mm-hmm. and look at the and the environment in which they express the student leadership. Yeah. And make a meaning of what student leadership is. Yeah. Um, and the curiosity around that was because um, nobody could tell me what student leadership is. Yeah, I, I thought I thought they would say, no, it's part of joining a political party. You see, <laughs> but it's like only sort part, you know. <laughs> it's, it's only part, sort of you know. Fees. Yeah, yeah. And it's actually like a a, a task related. Um, definition yeah because in the end you're expecting that somebody would be a student leader or and and that is a leader when they are a student yeah graduate with whatever qualification that they're getting from the university yeah and get into society and carry that leadership into wherever they are whether they're in the workplace they serving in a community building a street yeah whatever yeah you know so so I was that, that was bothering me hmm. that that is student leadership really just the political party yeah uh, one of the things that I I noticed was so many of for example our parliament members were student leaders hmm. so in the end student leaders become leaders of the country yeah or even of the continent, mm. you know, and so what do we say student leadership that in the end ends up in parliament yeah. and makes decisions for a whole country? Yeah. Um, and, and so that was my curiosity. Mm. What, so these people who are student leaders or who, who occupy student leadership positions mm. what do they say is student leadership yeah and what did you find wow <laughs> you know mm. i'll give you <clears throat> this explanation right yeah i'll tell you what i found but I'll, I'll, i want to explain it like this yeah i found stuff that took me about a year and a half to organize mm. That sounds hectic. <laughs> that sounds um, <laughs> that some direction is needed. That, yo. It sounds as if there's many, you know. So many aspects to yeah. it that we all don't understand. Yeah. It's so complicated. Yeah. It's so complex. It's so difficult. Mm. It's It has so much intertwined in it mm. that um, as I say, um, I felt like when I went through my 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 findings um, and finally discussion chapter for a year and a half, I felt like I am starting a new one. Yeah, <laughs> it felt like I was doing a, another piece. Another piece, <laughs> you yeah. that one, you know. Yeah. Um, and finally ended up with a model that I put on the last page. Mm. 
um, that I still want to go back to, you know. Yeah. Um, but this is potentially where this um, interest in the working together of conscious and unconscious dynamics in groups and organization yeah. really solidified mm. because there are, there are so many things below the surface that happen yeah. and there are, there are so many um, dynamics projected into these young people mm. they carry so much for all of us yeah um, and they are burdened with so much for yeah, all of us I see um, but then that is where our role as psychologists come in mm. and maybe even center and become rooted mm. um, because one of the things that I found was that um, as psychologists there's such a huge gap here um, of input and therapy and intervention yeah. that um, exists in the field of student leadership mm. that we haven't explored. Yeah. Um, and in that way, it makes this project bigger than myself mm. because all by myself, as one psychologist, there's absolutely no way that I'll be able to um, fill that gap. Yeah. Um, it's a hard cohort to advocate for yeah um because especially post um you know the fallless movements yeah fees um, must fall and yeah roads, roads must, must fall, fall and, and you know so many things were falling yeah. and statues were falling <laughs> yeah. And, yeah right um and so a, a big shift in, in a big shift i want to say like sounds like something really changed at some point whether is maybe politically or even yeah. in the um, the people who participate in yeah. their own lives. Yes. And I sense that the, 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 there's some sort of shift, um, some sort of impact, whether yeah. positive or negative. Yeah. There are still lingering effects. Yeah, of no, it. definitely. So, and this is what I'm talking about, right? Yeah. So, um, there, there has been trauma. Um, uh, let me say, post ninety four because of pre ninety four. Yeah. And the um, uh, the lull, you know, the plateau of the rainbow that was so promising. Mm. Is it going to shine? Is it not going to shine? We don't know what what's going to happen with this rainbow. Yeah. Um, and then you know, and 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 then the the, the reality check mm. of however many years post the 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 new that dispensation and mm. the new South Africa and the new you know landscape of higher education yeah and then hit by these fallist movements yeah. so there was trauma on trauma mm. on trauma yeah um, and that is now taken in by 18 20, 20 year olds mm. Um, who I believe don't necessarily have the psychological capacity to deal with all of that. Yeah. Um, which is where our role comes yeah. in, you know. And at the same time, as psychologists, we are having this conversation about transforming the field. Mm. You know, how can we provide relevant service? Yeah. How can we be relevant to communities? And all those things. And I, I truly believe nothing against psychologists in private practice. And we do need it. We won't ever yeah. uh, not, not, need, not that. need it. Yeah. But we need something else but too. But I think we need to think again yeah. about how can we reach further than yeah. give or take 10% that we claim medical aid from. Yeah. Um, and I mean, that's my social justice agenda. Yeah. You know, um, you said to me earlier, what is social justice? That's my social justice agenda. Um, you want to bring justice into society. But explain it, because it, you know, when we say social justice, yeah. I don't know, your connotations of yeah. um, 
unfairness, writing yeah. a wrong, yeah. that there's yeah. this wrong yeah. that yeah. needs to be righted yeah. somehow. Yeah. yeah. And um, maybe sometimes we don't maybe explain that, okay, it's social justice in this context. Yeah. It means, you know, you get ideas about redistribution. Yes. yes. You know, so, yes. you know, yeah. uh, politicking. Yes. But, but is, is it just that or is there more? Um, I mean, I think that's where it starts, yeah. you know, and yeah. it's. It's um, the word that I'm looking for. It, it, it's limited if we only think about it from a political perspective, yeah. right? Um, and we um, deny ourselves the opportunity to take responsibility yeah. um, for. So, so I was one of those first generations, hmm. right? First generation into into university, into university, yeah. and I mean, ultimately, ooh, the PhD. You yeah, know? the PhD. Yeah, uh, you're one of those when you at Christmas um, uh, during uh, the festive season and the Easter. You know, when you when families meet yeah, yeah, and you yeah. rock up, they say. That. That's the one, and then they are telling everybody to be, must be like it, <laughs> you know. So, I'm one of those first generations, right? Yeah, um, and as a first generation, so I'm bringing in so many things, but I mean, they all apply. So, um, by default, as a first generation, you inherit black tax, yeah. Um, and but but I was one of those, um. Uh, 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 rebellious ones. Yeah, I wanted to choose the black text that I was going to be. Yeah, contribute. I I thought to myself, I have to take care of myself, but education is important. Yeah. So let me take care of the education in my surrounding. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Um, and 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 so that's social justice. Yeah. That's 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 one's way. To play a role in the bigger agenda of social justice. I so, see. So, um, instead of having my niece, for example, go to school, go to university on study loans, and you know, incurring all the study debt, for example, mm. because I had that experience. Yeah. Let me do something that will make sure hmm. that she doesn't start there. Yeah, you know. Yeah, and and so uh, um, we are we are getting a, a wave of second generations yeah. now in you know amongst the population of black people in yeah. the country. Um, so so you know, first generation was was a buzzword before, but very soon we, we you know it's about to be old yeah because we're getting now the the, the rise of the second generation um, and what needs to look different yeah um, in the second generation is um, the capacity and the resources mm. to 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 see this development and growth whether it's economically or educationally yeah. um, or even um, just comfort yeah in 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 day to day, you know, so yeah. so it, social justice can have that political UN definition, hmm. you know, um, and we can all sound glamorous, like how I sounded glamorous in the UN when I was doing, I mean, my, in the UK when I was doing my presentations. Yeah. But what it boils down to at this very micro system level yeah. is what is my contribution in my own circle immediate circle yeah to make sure that um, the people around me do experience inclusivity do experience participation mm. do experience the opportunities that I didn't necessarily experience um, easily yeah and and you know when you say that you 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 I mean you are touching on something that I've been reflecting on right yeah. and and it's uh, I mean when you say that right I mean you're touching on something that's that, that I've been thinking and reflecting on right mm -hmm. um, you, you, you talk about you know so when we look into the environment when you walk out the door right we see that there, there are things that are not right and somebody must make the effort to um, right those wrongs, right? People struggle to have access to education. People don't have 
the same opportunities. People struggle with things they shouldn't struggle with, which makes it harder for them to study, uh, to start families, to, um, you know, just become the best versions of themselves. So we have people like this. So I, so as psychologists, we need to then move beyond the, um, the office and, and make some effort to assist people. Mm-hmm. But then again, you have people who'd say that, you know, when I, when, when I was coming up or when I was growing up, right, I, you know, I struggled, I struggled, I didn't have food or, you know, I, I struggled and then I pushed myself and then I studied and, and my plan was to study, get out the location, get out the hood, um, go to the suburbs and have a nice soft life, travel. Now you come and you're saying that, um, uh, social justice, you know, like make time and help people and people struggle with that. You, what are your thoughts with people who struggle with, why can't I just enjoy my life? You know, why do I need to be um, helping and righting wrongs and, you know? I mean, so, so I'm one of those. Yeah. Um, I think the last time I lived in the location was during my matric. Yeah. Um, I always say I moved out of home. Yeah. In my first year of university, I never went back. Yeah, and we take that for granted because once you move out, you probably go there four times a year. Once you yeah, first year, yeah, like, yeah, go there, yeah, and that's yeah, it. Yeah, yeah, you know. And then the the longer you stay in university, the more awake you are about. I don't want to go home. I want to stay in rest during the holidays. Yeah, you know. So I'm one of those. I I I, I didn't go back. Um, um, I can say because I, I, for me, it was a representation of moving forward. Yeah. Right. Yeah. We all do things for different reasons, maybe the same reasons, but anyway, that was my, my, my making sense of what I was doing. Yeah. Um, I, I, I. I made some contributions to studies of people people in my family um, but I think that at the core of it mm. um, it's being available mm. to maybe share information mm. um, to because you've walked this road, because I have been through the process of registering at the, at the university, yeah. I have gone through the 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 hills and the and the the loopholes and the 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 you know gatekeeping and all those things. I know the tricks now because I've been through it. Yeah. So I always say it, it, it's stupid to 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 experience the same problem or make the same mistake that somebody else made mm. because it's, the mistake has already been made yeah you don't have to repeat it it's so dumb yeah so the same way for me if i allow people who i know go through the same hills mountains problems all of those things yeah. to get registered in a university is stupid mm. so if i know that Tabang is younger than me and is coming, mm. then I lay out the red carpet. Yeah. Um, Tabang doesn't necessarily have to be my sibling, yeah. but you could be someone I know from the community where I come from or yeah. someone's sibling who I know, mm. but you are coming to where I am. Mm. So let me lay out the red carpet. Yeah. Um, it could be a student in my class yeah. um, who ex- is experiencing this, 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 this that I went through. Mm. Um, so let me lay out the red carpet. So you don't have to go through what I went through just because this is what black people go through or what women go through or people from the location go through mm. because I've already overcome that. Mm. Let me overcome that for us yeah. and not only for myself. Yeah. So. I don't have to give money mm. for that, mm. so I can still enjoy my life. Yeah, you know. So what I'm trying to say is, there's so many ways that we can make a difference in society. Even as a psychologist, there are so many ways um, that are not necessarily about 
sacrificing my income or my life or the softness of my comfort or anything like that but really just being open to laying out the red carpet for those who who come after you that for me that's really what it is yeah you, you know when you when you say that i i, I don't know if one can we can actually do it without sacrificing and sure i, I say this because I realize people who make an impact in, in, in um, people's lives, mm -hmm. in communities, and societies, they had to give up something. Mm. But it's not that even that they, it starts with them, right? So I like this idea that as a human being, you pass through many hands, that there's no such thing as I made it on my own. Mm -hmm. Um, I made it on my own. No, I did it. Mm -hmm. It's not possible mm -hmm. because when you were born, I mean, it's like human, like say human beings are not like snakes. Mm -hmm. you know, a snake will, will leave some eggs there, or and then the uh, little snakes would come up and survive by themselves. But a human being is different. Mm -hmm. From the day you are born, you need people to bath you, take care of you, clean you, and then you. These are typically your parents, and then the, the, you go through the hands of your parents, you go through the hands of your teachers, you go through the hands of your friends and uh, peers, you go through the hands of, I suppose, lecturers, uh, through people who start maybe employing you, uh, maybe the stuff that you read, stuff that you hear. Yeah, you, are, you are literally a collection mm -hmm. of other people's efforts and interests, mm -hmm. right? And And I don't think... So then you've made it, yes, mm. you've put in some energy, but mm. part of it is where you were born, the people that assisted you, the opportunities that you had. And and so to first be mindful of that, that I am who I am because other human beings actually made the effort. Mm -hmm. And I suppose the second thing for me, it would, it would also be, it would be that, I don't know if society can, you, is it possible to enjoy anything without other people having created it? Right. Right. I mean, if you've got a nice outfit, mm -hmm. someone else made it. Right. If you live in a nice, a quiet place, relaxed place, someone else made the effort to, to do that. So for me, the whole exercise of uh, humanity seems like there is an important part to, to always prepare a path for those who are coming. Because as you said, I mean, you you did your you do you did your research and you realize it's something that you can't do on your own. And I think significant things are like that. S significant things require uh, more than one lifetime. Mm. Uh, somebody will start it, mm. but it is when other people pick it up, you know. So so hence I say when you say that, you know, I think of things like that that. I think all of us in our own little corner, in our mm. own little ways, need to do something yeah. to, to right wrong. That's exactly what I'm saying. Yeah. Um, so, you know, we don't all have to sit in a political party or in parliament, yeah. you know. Yeah. We don't all have to be the the head of a government department, yeah. you know. Um, we are each a head of something that exists in our lives yeah um and 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 so what is that leadership yeah um and so that's one of the conclusions that i take from the work that i'm doing that there's a leader in each person yeah um and how do i express that leadership yeah. makes all the difference yeah um and i i'm picking up um that you know what you have just said yeah. About you know, person being a product of a yeah. collective. You're trying. You're helping me speak about social dreaming. Yeah. Which yeah. Is, I mean, maybe let's, let's which go is, into that because which social is, dreaming is something you. you know. Right. So yeah. which is my my research yeah. work and my my way of engaged scholarship. Yeah. Um, and and also what I was doing in the UK. Ah. Right. So so now. Uh, we are right. We are piecing <laughs> things together. Okay. Yeah, yeah. So. So look, I I learned about social dreaming through my PhD project, mm. um, it, it, and 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 I used um, what is called social dream drawing. Yeah. So it's it's an aspect of social dreaming. Um, so basically, what social dreaming is, um, it's a name that's given to a specific way and maybe method yeah. of sharing dreams in in a collective yeah who have gathered for a specific reason i see right so 
maybe we want to speak about well maybe the fallers movements right yeah. so the fallers movements have occurred and um, the university says okay everybody needs to debrief yeah um, and so we come together to share our dreams to debrief about the fallers and so what, what we will do is ask um, each person in the group um, to share dreams that they've had mm. that are coming up yeah. you don't even have to think hard about it like oh which dream and mm. you know um, it, we, so the assumption is that exactly what you said mm. that in me there's you yeah. and in you there's me yeah. and and in me as much as there's you there's also the context and the setting mm. and the context and the setting also has a portion of me in it mm. um, and so I am as much a part of my surrounding as much as the surrounding is made up of me in some way mm. and so we all of us contribute to a collection that makes us who we are but also that makes the context in which we exist yeah that includes our dreams mm. because our dreams are as much part of us as everything mm. um, and and the beautiful thing about dreaming is that you don't have to conjure it up yeah. You know, it's something that almost happens automatically. You're sleeping and you can't make yourself dream. You, you, it just happens. Mm. Right? Are these, so I wanted to clarify when you say dreams, right? In my mind, I was thinking aspirational. Yeah, you don't no. know. Aspirational? No. Dreams as in I'm our sleep. Talking about your sleep dreams. So I see. What happened the to you, that come to you when you were sleeping? Yeah, not that my aspiration, no. my dream is to be president. No. Not, so the dream that you're having that you're having when you're sleeping that's why I'm saying you can't help it yeah, I see um, and and so the assumption is that dream that you're having is a representation of what's happening around in the context mm. um, and the context can really be your your location it could be your city it could be the globe I see right so if I sit with someone in the UK or in the US or wherever and we start sharing dreams, we might actually recognize mm. a, a bit of ourselves in each, in each other's dreams, even if we don't live in the same place. Yeah. But we live in the same place because we live in the world yeah. and we live in the earth. Mm. Um, so this is the beautiful thing about, about it. And what I enjoy about it really in terms of the concept of humanity, yeah. you know, across boundaries of any kind. Yeah. So be it literal boundaries like, you know, this the map of South Africa yeah. ends here and Zimbabwe starts here. You know, literal, literal boundaries or boundaries across gender, race, belief systems, whatever. Mm -hmm. Dreams cut across all those things because mm -hmm. dreams are those things that don't ask permission. Ah. You know, and 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 they happen to all of us in the same way. Yeah. Because we all have to sleep. That's actually powerful. That's a, that's a that's a very powerful idea, you know, in how what what you said like so we are connected and not just that we are connected part of each other but part of the context and not just the context is in this community but the world because we are in the same place. I think that's a powerful idea. As you were saying that I thought I, I don't know, is it is it I don't know, uh, is it related to or have you is it connected with the ideas of the social unconscious of you? Yeah. And, and so. Yeah. So so, the, the Beyond actually, who 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 finally uh, took this theory forward and then made friends with Gordon Lawrence, who then coined mm. social dreaming, were diverging from. Ah. Jung and Freud and that uh -huh. school. So I write papers and 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 I'm, I get told you cannot speak about dreaming without speaking about Freud. And I'm like, yes, I can because it's not the same thing. <laughs> I see. You know. See, yeah. um, so they they diverged yeah. from you know. So um, Freud and Jung were mostly individually focused ah. um, and um, also did not. 
explore the concept of the social uh, as much as Beyond and Lawrence did. Beyond, Beyond, um, gentleman who talks about the crowds. Yes. Crowds. Yes, and uh, yes. They like using him with, I think, mob. Uh, how yes, 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 like yes, 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 yes. Okay. So. Um, yeah, so so we don't speak about archetypes or oh, okay. stuff so like that. So practically, maybe so describe a practical. Right. So you right. Call, let's get let's get the, so yeah. so so okay. In social dreaming, in in the way that it originated, yeah. um, one of the first first ways of doing social dreaming is called social dreaming matrix yeah. so you let people sit in a kind of spiral yeah. um, and chairs not facing each other so it's important not to do that eye contact mm. um, and people come there and they sit there and the host um, will introduce the session you know we are here to share about our dreams um, whichever come up and to the dreams we will also associate to the dreams and whatever associate associations come up um, you know um, can be verbalized and you know the the the, the matrix is open yeah. to all dreams and associations mm. right so what is the first dream and we wait for the first dream to come up is it something the first dream would be if I if I recall a dream or would you have told me before no tomorrow no Next week we are having the session. Write down your dreams. Spontaneous. Spontaneous. So we would meet and then we sit in the spiral. Yes. We're not facing each yes. other. Then you introduce yes. the topic like that, and then whoever is ready will say. This is the first, and we, and there there are no permissions oh, so or just, rejections or so it's a very, I'll say democratic and open space. And so somebody would say, you know, there is this dream that yes. keeps coming to me. Yes. I keep dreaming that. Um, I see doors open yes, at an academic yes, institution. Yes, yes, yes. Or it could be something and, unrelated. And then it could remind someone of another dream they had, or it could remind someone of a story they watched on TV about open doors. Ah. And and so the matrix develops. So then you keep talking, talking, talking. Associations Asso and dreams that are coming up, and the so how long the boundaries? Yeah. The boundaries are that. Um, the host will say, you know, the matrix starts now and end in an hour. I That's see. a boundary, I see. right? And and by the time the the clock hits the hour, then the host says, you know, this is the end of the matrix. Whether we were in the middle of sharing a dream or association or whatever, but when the clock strikes an hour, then that's the boundary. Mm -hmm. So the the time frame, I suppose, becomes the container. Mm. But otherwise, the the matrix develops as as it does. Then what happens after that hour? So um, we 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 disperse from the spiral, uh -huh. um, and we have what is called a post matrix reflection group. When does that happen? Um, so we could have set the time to say, okay, fine, we'll break for 15 minutes or ah. whatever. And then we can come together either in smaller groups or in the big group, depending, you know, what could be manageable at that point in time. Um, and have then the post matrix reflection group. And in the post matrix reflection group, we are then making meaning. Mm. Um, you know what what, what mm -hmm. the experience was mm -hmm. what was it like for you what yes did, what did it take yes you and yes yes yeah. and from then the assumption is that the matrix is inspiring new thoughts mm. about for example if the topic was the fallest movements then about the fallest movements ah. um, so the dreams inspire new thoughts and also help people to process um, mm. You know what they need to process be it the trauma be it unresolved conflict be it you know a memory that they had that they hadn't had time to think about further or you know whatever it is that needs to be processed it can happen in the matrix um, the only thing is that it's not um, it's not preempted that mm. through this session we are going to process this, this, this. I see, I see. So, so it can go in different ways. Mm -hmm. 
then is it therapeutic in its in its aim so it's not therapeutic in its aim you know but, but it might happen but, but it, it it happens you know and and so there's i think there's a big debate that i have brought up mm. <laughs> um in the field mm. um be, because some people can see the the i'll say the cathartic element you know and 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 accept the therapeutic value of it and then some people say no but it was never meant to be therapeutic but i know it was never meant to be therapeutic mm. but it ends up i think because the student leaders who i work with don't have spaces to air out mm. they experience this as therapeutic i see mm -hmm. so if it's not so if that's what happens but what, what was the aim for us to now to develop new thoughts. Aha. Uh -huh. And what, what do we do with those thoughts? So, so my experience, yeah. especially with the student leadership group, mm -hmm. is that those thoughts spur them into action. I see. Um, oh, maybe we could start solving problems in a different way like this. Because this is what they learned I see. From, the, from the social dreaming. Yeah. Um, and, and what I've seen is that we are now beginning to see a small triple of social justice. Mm. Um, one memory that I will never forget, um, an experience that really touched me a lot. Mm. Um, we were in a university in Limpopo mm. and Two of the, well, in this case, we were doing social dream drawing. Um, I'll explain it now. Um, two of the dream drawings were about, or one was um, a student leader dreaming about being a teacher. And then the other one was a student leader dreaming about being a pilot. Mm -hmm. And, um, if you, you know, if you think about areas in our country where they don't have a lot of career guidance, you know, being a pilot is like, a far fetched. Yeah, way out there. Were you gonna do this dream? Yeah. You know. But, you know. And um, those two dreams um, inspired the student leaders to think, "Ooh, our campus does not have a career resource, career guidance, c career counseling center." Mm. And because we are student leaders, I mean, this comes. It's it's an own initiative, right? It's, it, nobody said to them. Oh, advice do this mm. the, the 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 spontaneous um, and and yeah the spontaneous and emerging spirit of social dreaming really got them here to and they said amongst themselves um, our campus does not have this facility yeah and and these dream discussions are helping us to realize that as student leaders we could rather stop occupying the VC's office and write a proposal to him that we need this kind of thing on campus mm. that's contribution that's, wow no that's beautiful that's 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 beautiful and um, I suppose I mean it makes me also then think about um, so that's where the students are. Do you take this into? Have you done it with corporates? Um, I'd love to, you know. You'd love to. I'd love is, to. Is the way you'd like to. I'd love to. Um, yeah, because I think that you know we 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 might have been stuck in a rut. Mm. Um, maybe pre-COVID we were still just going along with life, and then COVID forced us into smaller spaces yeah. and now we're wondering yeah. where to from here um, and I appreciate social dreaming for the f for the fact that I'm not asking you a cognitive question mm. that requires you to give me a cognitive you know a filtered answer, answer you know yeah. um, it's not cognitively operated in that kind of conscious, rational, premeditated way. Mm. And so it opens up space 
for people to think beyond what they could have. I see. No, I, I, I see the value in it. Um, I, it's beautiful, actually, that you, you can create such a space that mm. people could you know, tap into th- uh, things that were alive in themselves and then, you know, not only from, uh, not only do they become aware and verbalize them, but, you know, put them into, mm-hmm. into action. Maybe, maybe two more things before we, 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 we wrap up. Um, so you said you, you'd like to do it with the corporate and, uh, but you haven't had, uh, too many opportunities to nah, do that. Not yet. Not yet. Not yet. But that's where you'd like to go. I'd like to go okay, there. No. So maybe this is a little ad. Hopefully somebody will <laughs> see this. <laughs> it's a little ad. ad. You never know, right? Yeah, right. And um, so what else is, um, uh, you know, occupying your mind? What are you, uh, besides your work, is, is there, or even if it's related to this, is there something that you are thinking about lately, you know? Right. Um, in, in your mind and... Because you said you do so many things, mm. you know. Uh, what else is keeping you up um, in a good way, maybe? You know, I think about Africa a lot. The continent. Mm-hmm. How come? I think about Africa a lot. I think about how there's so many solutions for global problems yeah. here. And, 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 and we... Mm. I mean ourselves as Africans yeah. and the world yeah. have not explored that. And wh- why is that? I mean, you know, for w- an example is that you know I, I say to my um, European and American Australian Contents. friends yeah. that this social dreaming that we are doing is an African concept. Yeah. yeah w- the person that we 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 align it to is not African, mm. but it's an African concept. Yeah. I remember growing up, sitting around the fire with cousins and my grandmother, actually being the social dreaming host. Yeah, you know, and and we're sharing our dreams, and 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 my grandmother helping us to extract wisdom from those dreams. Yeah. Um, and actually, you know, that part of the world knew about dreaming um, as a result of visits to Africa. Yeah. Uh, um, Lawrence himself, you know, in Kenya, and um, Jung went to, came to different parts of Africa and wrote about dreaming as a result of his yeah. visits to Africa. So I, I really do believe that there's so much untapped wisdom yeah here yeah and the wealth of the globe Mm. sits here Mm. and i i wonder how we could discover or reach self-emancipation and self-authorization and Mm. just give ourselves permission yeah to do to 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 be confident to say no you've always said the sky is blue it's not blue it's black I see. you know yeah um I, yeah I'm, I'm i'm yearning for us to do that yeah i i i was just thinking interesting you should say that because um there's this beauty um that's in the continent and um we are talking about you know but it's it's, it's almost as if we must get permission somewhere to, to be confident enough to document, to share it, to innovate. It's almost as if we are looking for someone to say it's mm-hmm. okay, mm-hmm. right? And um, which, one of the things that I think about is our own psychology, mm-hmm. our own, uh, I feel somewhere maybe there's a little bit of work in terms of encouraging us to know that we, we're good enough. We don't need people to, to, to encourage do you I don't know how to ask this but as you go and you and you I wanted to ask you something else but let me ask you this first right um, do you feel your Africanness as you travel and do you is, is that something that you're aware of that maybe I'm a little bit different does it make you feel um, 
excited does it make you does it make you feel isolated i mean do you do you, well, let me start there do you do you feel that as you um, as, as a woman in academia do you feel like there's a you know your womanhood or i don't know if that makes sense do, do you feel you stand out in a way um, as you are traveling meeting people talking to your counterparts and it's so funny because i feel that isolation here you say that you feel it here. Mm -hmm. What is it that you feel? Here? And when you say here, are you, are you talking the continent? In South Africa. In South Africa. Mm -hmm. I feel yeah. the isolation uh -huh. um, with regards to being black and being a woman in South Africa. Yeah. Um, I feel embraced beyond borders. Yeah. You, you, does if you feel more at home? Yeah. Yeah, because those are not issues. Maybe I don't know, but I mean, places where I've been are so concerned about decolonization and you know integrating uh, people who have not been in the forefront mm. uh, before. Um, I know it's our our said. South African agenda mm. uh, and maybe it remains just that I don't know mm. um, I'm sounding a little bit pessimistic the optimist that I am um, about what we as South Africans are doing to each other mm. um, and um, you know there's conscious and unconscious envy mm. um, that can that can come up yeah. And and sometimes I you know sometimes we might want to be psychological about it and call it unconscious envy but sometimes I think it's really conscious envy. Yeah. Um and sometimes you can experience this conscious envy even from your own black women counterparts. Mm. Um you know and and this thing of no but why are you progressing why are you going there? Mm. You know a funny thing I was uh talking to one of my colleagues yesterday and she was saying to me that sometimes people ask ask you, you know, how long are you going to Spain? Yeah. You know, um, as if going for a week or going for a month makes a difference. Yeah. You know. Yeah. Um, and 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 um, and I do understand the psychology behind it because I think we are a traumatized people. Mm. Um, and and what trauma does is it constricts your thinking yeah um and so this constriction of thinking would maybe have people think that the pie is so small yeah but actually the pie is so big yeah. and there's space for all of us mm. um and it's a thing of you finding your space yeah um and the reason why it's difficult for you to be comfortable in my space mm. that you're so envious of is because it's not your space so yeah. you need to find your space yeah. so that you can bask in it you know um, so um, I, I experience those I'll call them funny things here mm. um, I haven't yet out there um, I maybe because I haven't experienced it, you know. Yeah, yeah, but but it stands out. But it stands out which here, is, which is interesting, you know. Yeah, and I very. suppose it would hurt more even because it's, yeah. it's, it's somewhere you'd expect yeah. to be at home. To be at home. Yeah, my one of my colleagues used a very interesting um, term in discussion um, regarding a paper that we're busy writing together um, on the sense of belonging of student leaders. Um, in universities and and the term was indigenous foreigner ah uh, yeah it's it, it's hard yeah it's hard yeah it's a hard yeah, it's, it's a, a hard. hard concept yeah um but we you know as much as we we in the paper we're explaining it as a as an experience of student leaders but i think many of us have that experience okay no fair enough i i i can i can see that and I, I asked because it was it was in, in when when you were communicating I, I felt to ask you that that you know is there something like that and mm. it's interesting that 
if I asked and you responded mm. in that way. And so maybe to, to end off then, you know, um, the future and, and um, what is it that, you know, uh, people who feel helpless, you know, mm. what is it they can do? What is it that as Africans, as psychologists, uh, mental health practitioners can look forward to, you know, when you think about things like that, you know, what, what gives you hope? What gets you excited about tomorrow? The fact that I'm alive. The fact that you're alive. You know, yeah. um, because life is so precious. Yeah. Um, and I, it's possible that we may have realized that during COVID, yeah. when you saw people die like flies. Yeah. Um, life is so precious and um, we for the fact that I'm still alive means that there's a fire in me that's still burning yeah now somebody could be going through depression and they might have like such a small flame yeah but it's fire nonetheless yeah um, and 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 I suppose that's my position of hope yeah. you know talking that's a beautiful um, image by it, by it, you know. So when you said that I saw a, a small flame and I saw um, like a field with dry grass and I just, even just a little... You see, now you're associating. Yeah, I love that. Just a little <laughs> flame. Yeah. yeah. Can, you know, put the entire place of blame. Yeah, yeah. You know, and I mean, if I, if I, maybe if I drive it even more closer to home, you know, speaking to that person who may be experiencing depression yeah um, think about low shading right mm. and a very small light yeah that could be in that peach yeah. black right yeah when there's low shading mm. that light mm. that is burning in you that's so small yeah but you feel like it's so small yeah can light up a piece of the room yeah you know and 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 so I yeah, I, I think that we we could appreciate life more and what is in us yeah. more. Yeah. You know, um, I, th I I do believe that gone are the days that where, where when we we live off what we get from outside ourselves. Yeah. You know, and there's so much within us that can contribute to society yeah you know to our communities even to ourselves yeah um but yeah i'll stop here otherwise we won't stop talking yeah but but uh. thank you very much i mean we, we we started off by discussing um you know you the 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 teacher the lecturer the master's program yeah. talking about the uh, social dreaming yes. research yes. We talk about you being know, a psychologist feel, yeah it's a psychology and um we're ending off with uh, with hope, which for me is um, is um, I, I, I think it's a, it's a powerful thing, you know, because I I'm writing on grief. I don't know when eh. I'll, I'll, I'll put that book out, but it's something I've been reflecting on. Mm -hmm. And one of the things I came across whilst writing about grief, I started, you know, it, it actually put me in a very dark place. Mm -hmm. And um, but the more I wrote, the more I reflected. The idea of death um, made me feel so alive because it makes me appreciate little things. It, it, the fact that I'm alive. So when you say that, that resonates with me. And even even this, right? Um, like uh, I don't take for granted the conversations because I know it's time you can't get back. So mm -hmm. I actually appreciate. I appreciate the fact that you came out, you know, finally. <laughs> yeah, finally. <laughs> finally. But listen, I mean, the thing about yeah. about death or grief yeah. is how we associate or even um, link it with shame yeah. and disillusionment, yes. helplessness, yeah. um, and sometimes guilt yeah um and and what one does with those things you know either projecting them or mm. putting them into themselves which you know we call introjection yeah um and those things how they end up potentially at a psychoanalytic level unconsciously you know having you 
behave in a certain way but ultimately the more and more you stay there you yeah. know it becomes something that makes somebody sit in your couch yeah um so i i'm wondering about a time when as much as maybe death can never be separated from shame mm. um but how or even grief but how we can um extract some kind of um, constructive meaning yeah um, out of it to almost rejuvenate and almost um, rediscover mm. our existence mm. you know out of that feeling of helplessness yeah you know but i mean one has to go through i mean now we're going full circle but one has to go through a very deep work yeah um to be able to come out of on the other side yeah in that way no makes makes sense to me you know makes makes sense to me because it's something i've been reflecting on and um if i can associate one more time when you said that i was just thinking how kings die mm -hmm. and immediately another one is right you know right. Right? right and i think when we look at death as the end in that sense uh, forgetting that we have limited time here mm -hmm. and we're actually passing on things right and I think that's something that has helped me in that I'm beginning work, mm. but I know it's other people who continue. Mm -hmm. And and sometimes we, we need to meet that space, mm -hmm. you know, because um, I was also writing something about if death didn't exist mm -hmm. and what would happen then. And right. it's, got, it's got its own problems. Right. And so, but uh, I think this is another conversation. Yeah, but it sounds it sounds like another conversation that's yeah. coming up. So, so yeah. now that you've been here, you know, you're always welcome. You can always, you know, talk. Lovely. Uh, but much appreciate. Thank you for taking Thank the you. time. Thank you for having me. It was lovely. I enjoyed this. Yeah. Yeah. Lovely. Thank you.